So we printed this Vortex nozzle on our Trump True Print 2000, and it needs some finished machine work on the back side. So we needed a way to hold this part in our lathe. So today we're gonna show you how we leveraged our Mark Forged Metal X to 3D print a set of jaws so we can hold our part in our lathe and face the back side of it perfectly. If you like what we're doing and you wanna see more cutting edge additive technology, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. It really helps us provide you guys with free educational content. Make sure you stick around till the end of this video because Tyson's gonna install our jaws. He's gonna clamp the 3D printer part and finish machine the backside. But first, let's go check out the design of our jaws. Well, when you look at this part, we have these fins on the inside that make it basically impossible to hold the part from the inside. On the outside of our part, we've got these four radiuses that wrap all the way around our part. And we hmm. thought we could 3D print some jaws that fit that contour perfectly so we don't have to waste CNC machine time cutting our jaws and we can run them unattended on our Metal X. So here you can see our jaw grabbing our part and it's actually only grabbing on these radiuses. There's clearance in these sections here. So if we go to a sectional view, then you can see right through here, it's grabbing on these radiuses and then there's clearance in these sections here. We figure this will be an effective way to hold our part, but also an effective way to make sure that it successfully prints without having any unwanted interference within our jaw. So now that our jaw's finished, let's head over to Iger and look at how we're gonna print this jaw. So here's an STL file of one of our jaws that we just uploaded into Iger. Now we're gonna print these jaws out of 17.4 stainless steel with a 5 thousandths layer height or 0.125 millimeters. If we take a look inside of our internal view, we're gonna be able to see that everything in white represents our vice jaw. Everything in purple represents the support structures that will be used during our print. If we go into our 2D view and we scrub through our layers, once we get to our supports, we can see that we have a small gap right here separating our support structures. Now, what that's gonna do is help us remove our supports. We're gonna be able to come in here and knock all these supports out. After that, we can come in with a punch and knock out the supports from inside the counter bores and our jaw will be ready to be installed. So now that our print's been fully set up in Iger, we're gonna go ahead and send this file over to the Metal X so it can be printed fully unattended after that, we'll wash and center our jaws, and then we'll hand them off to Tyson so he can install them into the SMX 3100 and do the finished machine work on our Vortex nozzle. What's up, Tice? What's up? Here's your part. Have fun, man. Oh, thank you. These jaws fit nicely on the master jaws, so Trevor did a good job of printing these. Normally, I tighten these jaws with a torque wrench, but I can't fit a torque wrench in here because of the angle of these jaws. So I'm just gonna go using my hand get it as tight as I can get it. This is the position that the jaws will be in when I clamp onto the part. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up one of these jaws by hand, put the part in, move it back to this position, and then we're gonna clamp onto the part. Before we cut our part, I thought it would be cool to go over to Mastercam and show how I put those 3D printed jaws into my Mastercam file. Now this would be very useful if you were doing OD turning on the part and you wanted to avoid those jaws and have the exact shape of those jaws so that Mastercam knew where all your clearances are. So it's a very useful thing to know and it was pretty easy to do. I'm gonna go to my job setup. Under job setup, I have my work holding options here. And for the left spindle, I'm gonna double click my chuck jaws over here. Now you can see I've already got mine selected, but I'll show you how I grab that. Normally when you open up a Mastercam program by default, it has your parametric jaws and you tell it what kind of geometry you want on the jaws by giving it different heights and widths for these steps. So you can also select a solid model to create your jaws from. So in this case, I took the 3D model and you saw it already from Trevor. He had a 3D model of the jaws. 
So I took those and I actually said to select them. So in my master camp file, I have a level with the jaws. You can see I've got two jaws on the part and a third jaw that's kind of sticking out here. This was the jaw that I selected from the part. We'll select the solid of the jaws. It says to select a chuck jaw face. So I'm gonna select the bottom of the jaw here. And now we have to set up the orientation of the jaw. We're gonna look at the top view and I want this orientated so that the jaw is facing the proper direction on the top view. So what I have to do is I have to flip the jaw. So first we're gonna flip it in Z. And you can see that it flipped it to the proper direction. But this is the top jaw, so I'm gonna also flip this in X. And we're gonna hit OK. And you can see I've got a solid geometry of my jaw over here. You can adjust things like the height and the width and set up a boundary definition. I just selected spin for that. And then on parameters, you can also set up if this is an outside or inside diameter jaw. And you can select a reference point to set up your position on where you're clamping on the jaw. You can see after I did that, I have a preview of the jaw holding the part. After you set up the jaw, you can go to your stick out lengths on the setup and set up how far down you're clamping onto the part. You can see on my preview, it's showing that I have a nice grip on my part and it's giving me a pretty accurate view so that if I bring any tools next to these jaws, the program will know and I can set Mastercam to avoid those jaws. Something like this, I'm not doing too much OD work on this particular example, but it is a simple way to get those jaws into your program. And it's a very useful thing to do in Mastercam because in an actual machining environment, you're using all kinds of different shapes of jaws and you want to be able to tell Mastercam how far down you can go in your part without hitting the jaws. It's really cool that we're able to 3D print a part out of stainless steel and it's really cool that we're able to 3D print jaws that perfectly hold on to this contour of this part and we're able to do any extra work that the 3D printer leaves for us. So we got a good setup and I can turn the rest of the part down, no problem. So thank you very much for watching. If you like what we're about and you like what we're doing, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.